Okay, let's see if I can find some other problem here. Let's see. What amount of heat must be supplied to 2 into 10 power minus 2 kg of nitrogen at room, te room temperature to raise its temperature by 45 degrees Celsius at constant pressure? Molecular mass is given. <clears throat> what amount of heat must be supplied so that means they are asking you to find the q q is equal to mc delta t but then they said constant pressure which means it's going to be cp mass of the nitrogen is given delta t is raise its temperature by 45 degrees so this is also given Molecular mass is given, R is given, 8.3, okay. But I don't know the CP. If I know the CP, I can easily do this problem. So let's see. This, we are going to study it in the next chapter. So there is a formula for this. So take it down from kinetic theory of gases. chapter we will study this formula later we'll derive this so the cp is given as 7 by 2 of r for diatomic gas you see nitrogen oxygen hydrogen all these things are diatomic gases helium for example is a monoatomic gas That means CP is also known, so that means you can calculate the Q. But there is a small problem here. This is Q is equal to MC delta T, so this is kg, right? So this will be, that's why I told you, you have to write along with the units so that you don't make mistakes. So here, this will be kg, but CP, you see, this is joule per mole per kelvin so cp will be <coughs> 7 by 2 8.3 joule per mole it's not per kg it's mole, mole per kelvin or celsius okay kelvin or celsius can write okay the raise in temperature is 45 degree So Celsius, Celsius cancels, okay? But only if you had kg here, I'll be able to cancel kg and kg so that I'll get the cube. Everyone following this? Yes, no? Yes, sir. So any thought how I can convert, either I have to convert this kg to mole so that the mole and mole will cancel or I have to convert this mole to kg. <coughs> So look at this molecular mass of nitrogen is 28. Okay. So what this means is 28 is a um, atomic mass unit. Okay. So molecular mass is 
28 u nitrogen i think it will be like you know 7 and 14 right so if it is n2 you will be having seven protons and seven neutrons in one nitrogen atom here for nitrogen atom right <coughs> sorry nitrogen molecule will be having 28 okay so 28 protons and neutrons sorry 28 protons and neutrons together it will be 28 okay, 14 plus 14 which means to say that they are given 28 as a mass molecular mass what that means is it's not 28 gram okay it's 28 u so very often you folks will be confused so take it down properly molecule we are talking about extremely small right micro micro level so it 28 grams it cannot be 28 grams so it has to be 28 u <coughs> so take it down properly molecular mass or atomic mass right if it is for an atom i would call it as atomic mass here we are going to call it as molecular mass 28 u actually they should have mentioned u but maybe it's a convention that they don't put the u So one mole of nitrogen, right? One mole of nitrogen. Can anyone tell me what will be the mass? Anybody? I thought chemistry was studying all these things. So it will be equal to 28 grams. Okay. So for one mole, it will be equal to 28 grams. Sir, how do I know that? Well, one mole is nothing but 6.02 into 10 power 23. Okay. For so that many molecules. Remember, mole means just a number. Okay. Dozen means 12. Okay. Dozen means it's not like, you know, 12 bananas. Okay. It can be 12 bananas or it can be 12 apples or it can be 12 oranges it can be anything or 12 stones right can be anything similarly when i say one mole right it is just 6.02 into 10 power 23 but since i'm talking about molecules here i should say it is molecule if i were to talk about atoms i will say it's 6.02 into 10 power 23 atoms if i was talking about ions then i will say 6.02 into 10 power 23 ions <clears throat> if I'm talking about particles, I'll say 6.02 into 10 power 23 particles. So make a proper note. Very, very confusing. Very often you folks will make a mistake. So it's not atoms. It's not molecules. It's not ions. It's not particles. It can be anything. Okay. So here we are talking about nitrogen molecules. So we have to say it is molecule. One nitrogen molecule is 28U. But what is U? U is the mass of one proton or nit <coughs> neutron, which is 1.67 into 10 power minus 27 kg. These things are coming a little bit in your 12th standard. Okay, so if you don't follow it, don't don't worry about it. Simple mathematics. Okay. <coughs> when I multiply 6 into 1.67, it will come around approximately 10. Kilo means 10 power 3. You see, this is 23 plus 1, 24. This is minus 24. So this 24 and this minus 24 will cancel. Okay, Which means what is left is 28 grams. So this is applicable for any gas. Okay, I mean, whatever atomic mass unit you have, right? That can be written as grams. If you write it in grams, it will become one mole. So take it down properly. It's coming in the later chapter. I think it will be useful for your chemistry also. So take it down. 
So when you say molecule, you have to say molecular mass. When you say atom, you have to say atomic mass. Atomic mass of nitrogen will be 14 U. Molar mass of nitrogen molecule will be 28 grams. Molar mass of nitrogen atoms will be 14 grams. If you take hydrogen, hydrogen atoms, H2, it's it will be 2U because um, two protons are there, right? One proton in each hydrogen, which means it will be 2U, which means it will be 2 grams. So one mole of hydrogen will be equal to 2 grams. So if that is confusing, I will open the handbook. <clears throat> Let me get some water. Okay, if you go to kinetic theory of gases, right? I have given you a very important table. So I'm sure it will be useful for your chemistry also. So if you take one hydrogen molecule, one hydrogen atom, the mass number of the atom is one. Molecular mass is one U. Molar mass will be one gram. What does that mean? <clears throat> Whatever number you have, you can convert it to grams. Why? Because just now I explained you how the tens gets cancelled out. So all these things will cancel. It will be in grams. Okay, approximately it will be equal to 28 in grams. You see nitrogen, mass number of the atom is 14. Molecular mass is 28U, which means 28 grams. Similarly, carbon 12, 12U, 12 grams. Uranium 235, 235U, 235 grams. Okay. So nuclear physics you'll be studying in the next next year okay so for now take down this explanation so that you'll understand how this 28u gets converted to 28 grams for one mole anybody still copying can i change the screen okay so that was uh, something like a side derivation. So only if you understand this, this will make sense. So that means <clears throat> one mole of nitrogen will be equivalent to 28 grams. Okay. Which means to say that one gram of nitrogen will have 28 has to come on this side. So one by 28 moles. <clears throat> Why would I do that? because I'm going to rewrite this equation from here to here. So 2 into 10 power minus 2. Kilo is 10 power 3. 1 gram is equivalent to 1 by 28 mole of nitrogen. 7 by 2 into 8.3 joule per mole per degree Celsius into 45 degrees Celsius. So do the math and you'll get this answer. Okay, why? Because you see now I can cancel the mole with mole, Celsius with Celsius. So what is remaining is only Joule. So multiplication, you are department. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.
think you should be getting something close to 900 joules. Okay. Let's see if that is true. So this is 7 and 28 will cancel to 4. 4 into 2, approximately 8. So 2 into 45 will give me 90. And then there is extra 10 here. So that will give me around 900. Any questions, any doubts? I'm sure it will be useful for your thermodynamics in chemistry also. Okay, I don't know if you have it in your 11th standard, 12th standard. Do you have it in your 11th standard, thermodynamics, chemistry? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Yes. Okay. But I think there you will be studying something like, you know, enthalpy, entropy, all those things. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, but the basic concepts are still the same. Okay. So, I hope you are, you know, you should get very comfortable with this, you know, kilogram to mole conversion, mole to kilogram conversion. There should not be any confusion at all. Okay. If you understand one thing, you can do all the other things. <clears throat> of course, you have to practice a lot. Okay, I'm going to change the screen. If you're, if anybody is copying, please copy it quick. As I told you, we don't have much time for numericals. Okay, so only one class I can do numerical and then I will get started with the next chapter. So next class you have the test. So study the theory properly, practice it. Third one, I think it's um, theory question. Try it yourself. Okay. Fourth one sounds it's a numerical. Yeah, I think it involves some three moles of hydrogen at STP. Okay. Okay, let's try the fourth one. A cylinder with a mobile piston contains three moles of hydrogen at STP, standard temperature and pressure. The walls of the cylinder are made of a heat insulator. The piston is insulated by having a pile of sand on the on it. By what factor does the pressure of the gas increase? The gas is compressed to half its original volume. So drawing is the language of engineers and scientists. So the first thing is convert it into a drawing. So since insulation, you have to draw the hatch. Okay. You don't have to worry about the sand part in the piston. Okay. Pile of sand on it. Okay. So maybe you can show that this is the insulated cylinder. <clears throat> Pile of sand means maybe you can put some sand on top of this. Okay. So maybe a sand can act as an insulator. Okay, that's what they mean. So when, it, but it says for pressure, right? Like to add pressure for the piston. Yeah, maybe you are compressing this, right? You can imagine that you are pushing this piston downwards which means the piston will be coming over here, which means the volume will decrease, whereas the pressure will increase. Do you agree? Yes, sir. So let's read that one more time. By what factor does the pressure of the gas increase? If the gas is compressed to half its original volume. <clears throat> So 
So heat insulator means all the heat cannot come out, which means the temperature will rise. So when the temperature is rising, I think it's not a constant process. Okay, listen carefully. When it is completely insulated, right? There is no heat transfer. So what process is it? Anybody? When there is no heat transfer, what do you call that process? Nobody is able to remember anything. What is the opposite of diathermic? Adiabatic. Adiabatic. So diathermic means heat can flow through the wall. Adiabatic means heat cannot flow through the wall. So since it is adiabatic process, right? I'll be using P PV power gamma is equal to constant. Because you know that the temperature is not constant. So the temperature keeps changing. So since the temperature is changing, I should not be using the P is proportional to V. This is Boyle's law. Okay, so PV is equal to constant. This is true only when only when temperature is constant. But how do I know temperature is not constant here? Because it is completely insulated, which means the temperature will rise. Okay. So this is adiabatic, not isothermal. So that's why I told you a bit confusing when I when I was discussing Carnot engine, I told you about this. Okay. In isothermal, there is no insulation because the heat, the extra heat will come out so that the temperature will remain the same. In adiabatic, all the piston and all the cylinders are insulated, which means whatever extra heat is generated, that heat cannot go out, which means the temperature will rise. So three moles of hydrogen at STP, standard temperature and pressure. So they're asking you to find the raise in pressure. How many times it becomes P2 by P1 is what is asked. Volume is half its origin volume. Okay, so that means P2, I, I will be bringing it on one side. P2 by P1 will give me V1 by V2. Initial volume compared to the initial volume, the final volume is half, which means this was, let's say, 10, then this is 5. So 10 by 5, it will give me 2. So that means this will become 2 power gamma. Which means to say that uh, new pressure P2, right? By what factor does the pressure of the gas increase? Which means compared to P2, P2 is equal to P1 into 2, 2 power gamma. Gamma is usually like, you know, around 1.3 or 1.4 okay, for diatomic gases. Yeah, it, I think it says hydrogen, which means it will be around 1.4. In the previous one, we said CP, okay, that was CP, CP 7 by 2 um, R, right? So the answer here is 2 power gamma, 2 power 1.4. So that many times it will increase. Okay. So this, if you have calculator, you can use calculator or you have to use log. Okay. 
if any of you have some trouble using the log log tables right i think you will be using it for your chemistry right chemistry calculation is that correct anybody yes no nobody knows okay it's a waste of time talking with you folks at least you should say you don't know that okay nobody knows to open your mouth sir until now uh, we didn't need any log sir okay okay i will send you this in the whatsapp groups okay in case if you want you can refer to it how to use the log tables so this is like you know how to do the multiplication in log tables how to do the division using log how to do the powers using log so as i told you some time back you now multiplication can be done as addition subtraction will become sorry division will become subtraction powers will become multiplication so that's the power of logarithms okay i'll send you this later <laughs> even we didn't use any log samyukta okay I thought chemistry sir used to tell me that they have to use some log tables. I don't know. Okay, it doesn't matter. And by the way, this kinetic theory of gases, we already completed some of the topics like you know, Boyle's law, Charles law, Yellow's X law. I already completed it. Okay. Ideal gas equation. Only this last part is remaining. Okay, so this is a small chapter. We can come back later. Uh, maybe we'll come back. We'll do the oscillations in the next next class. Okay. So two power one point four. So I had a doubt, like, can you take one theory type question? Theory type, which one you have doubt? 12.3. Uh, 12.3, okay. Explain why two bodies at different temperatures T1 and T2 brought in thermal contact do not necessarily settle down, settle to mean temperature T1 plus T2 by 2. So, again, this is, suppose let's say I have a big tank of water. Or let's say you take a vessel and you, you boil it to 100 degrees Celsius. And you take a small coin, right? Like a five rupee coin. Okay. And it my it's made of some metal, right? Or alloy. So let's say it's in room temperature, which means it is at 25 degrees Celsius. If I take this and you know drop it inside this, right? So if I say that 100 plus 25 is 125, 125 by 2 is how much is that? Some 60 something, 62 something. <clears throat> yeah, 62.5, right? So if you say that, then they are saying that it is wrong. Why? Anybody? You see, this is a huge container, whereas this is a very, very small one. Okay. 
so the cp values will change and then the mass the amount of mass you have here and the amount of mass here you have here is also different so that means the guiding principle here is anybody remember what was the guiding principle when i dropped this what is the guiding principle nobody remembers heat lost uh, when sir it's basically like when higher temperature to the body at the lower temperature they reach equilibrium position <clears throat> yeah but what is the guiding principle heat lost is equal to heat gain heat gain okay so this is what we studied in the previous chapter which means this is mc mc delta t here also it is mc delta t here who is losing the heat water so m water c water delta t water this is some metal c metal delta t metal okay so using this only you can find the t final so the basic answer i am trying to say here is not <clears throat> suppose if it had the same mass and same same c specific heat capacity then this one this one this will cancel this term on this term can cancel similarly if you, if they had the same specific capacity this term on this term will cancel which means the delta t will be the same okay in that case it's possible that you can have a average temperature okay but here the specific heat capacity of water is different specific heat capacity of this metal coin is different mass of the water is huge like a big tank mass of the coin is very very small which means <clears throat> it will not come to the average temperature so that's what you are supposed to write kirtan following yes sir the answer you are supposed to write is mass is different specific capacity is different so temperature will settle down in a different point not at the average point okay sir if this is not making sense generally i like to talk in terms of water level okay you take a big tank on this side you take a small tank on this side so initially the water tank is filled up to this this tank is having very very little water initially let's say that it's not connected right so this is like a plug <clears throat> so the moment i remove this plug right so if you think that the water level is going to come to somewhere in between right between this level and this level right this is point 1 case uh, option 1 the second option is water level will go down like this and maybe the water level on this side is like this which is which cannot be true right because it has to be in the same level so i will remove that option because that doesn't make sense that option does not make sense so the and another option is this water level will drop very little and it will come somewhere here so which option do you think is correct option 1 or option 2 which one will happen option 1 option is that such a difficult question hmm? nobody is answering option 2 kirtan okay what about others it's a very silly question right because you know that this is a big tank and this is a very very small thin tube right so it's not going to come over here 
that means if this reduces a little bit that itself is sufficient to raise this level this much in other words this volume drop is equal to this volume rise which means it will be coming to this level over here it's the same thing which you are trying to say over here so to raise this temperature of 25 degree to say 90 degree right you have a huge amount of water here which means this will be raised to a higher temperature but then since it is 100 degree it will still be dropping a little bit but not it will not drop to 62 degree right Okay, let's go to the second one. Which one you have doubt, Kirtan? Which one you tried? Or you have doubt in all this? The last one. Last one. The climate of a harbor, harbor town is more temperate than that of a town in a desert at the same latitude. Okay, what do they mean by that? Climate of a harbor town is more temperate. So harbor town means uh, land breeze and sea breeze will be there it's more temperate than that of a so temperate means something like you know moderate right so whereas a desert town will be like <clears throat> It will be going, you know, the temperature will be rising very high in the la daytime, and then it will be very cold in the night time. Okay. So they are saying that doesn't happen in a harbor town, like say for example, like a Chennai. Okay, which means it will be like the temperatures are not going to change too much. So morning you go, say maybe it's around 35, in the night, maybe it's around 30, right? So it's not going to drop too much. Whereas if you go to Rajasthan or somewhere, right? So probably it will be like, you know, morning it will be like, you know, 45 degrees. The night time it will be like, you know, 5 degree or 0 degree, right? Yeah. Anybody been, been to Rajasthan, Pilati, somewhere? Yes, sir. Yeah. So that means that's what they're asking here. I think the straightforward answer would be, you know, you can say that the land breeze and the sea breeze right kind of averages out the temperature so meaning if it is high temperature the air is kind of going up which means the cold air from the land is going into the sea right the <clears throat> during the sea breeze the cold air from the sea is coming into the land so that means we already talked about this in the last class last chapter okay so this is uh, water we studied that the air molecules here will rise up, which means the air will rush in here to compensate for this vacuum. So this is in sea breeze. So this happens in the day, um, daytime, yeah, because this will be hot and this will be cold because of the specific heat capacity of water high. In the night time, this water region will be hot, which means the air molecules, we said it will rise up here. So which means there will be a vacuum here. So this will be going here. So this will be called as land breeze. Okay, so we studied this in the last chapter. But here, <clears throat> you can simply say that the land breeze and sea breeze maintains the temperature, keeping it moderate. Whereas that is not possible in a desert town. Is that okay? Yes, sir. <clears throat> the air pressure in a car tire increases. We already talked about it, right? There is some friction in the tire on the road, which means the temperature of the tires will increase, which means the pressure will also increase. Because as temperature increases, pressure will also increase.
a coolant in a chemical or a nuclear plant that is the liquid used to prevent the different parts of a plant from getting too hot should have high specific heat right this some of you if you have you know worked with some car engines you know that there is something called a coolant right so the coolant is going around the engine to maintain the temperature of the engine <clears throat> if you run the engine without the coolant what will happen the piston and so the overheat yeah it will overheat and the piston and the engine will the cylinder will jam and it will not move at all so it will be completely damaging the car engine and as i always say engine is the heart of your automobile okay so if you damage the engine you don't have a choice but to, you know remove the engine and put a new engine or instead you can go and buy a new car <clears throat> so the coolant you know in olden days they used to use uh, water right in old movies you must have seen that you know it will get too hot and then they will pour some water inside the radiator but these days i think you know that problems don't appear that much and uh, that is because they use uh, coolant which is like a, if i remember correctly it's something like a mixture of water and glycol ethylene glycol right so 50% water and 50% ethylene glycol So that mixture will be having a high specific heat. So that means it can absorb a lot of heat from the engine. So that's the answer you're supposed to say. So because it can absorb more heat, higher the specific heat capacity, it can heat, it can take more heat. Okay, let me go to the next one. I think we did 12.4. I would say try some of the problems yourself. The diagram question looks interesting, so let's try The thermodynamic system is taken from an original state to an intermediate state by linear process shown. So that means um, intermediate. Its volume is then reduced to the original value from E to F. E to F by an isobaric process. They didn't say which process they are talking about, so maybe they are talking about D to E. So, and then they are saying its volume is then reduced to origin value, which means this is your original, so this is your starting point. So, from here you are going to E, and then from E you are going, you are doing an isobaric process. Isobaric means pressure is constant. Volume you are reducing it. Calculate the total work done by the gas from d to e to f so work done from here to here to here to here anybody getting any idea what to be the work done very first logic we studied in thermodynamics <clears throat> work done the net work done will be equal to anybody So nobody is studying. So the network area. area of the loop, right? 
because the work done by D2E will be this total area. The work done by E2F will be this area. Okay. Here I am getting work, here I am giving work, which means I have to subtract this total area from this one, which means what is remaining is only this one. Agent pressure. Yeah. So it means it's going to be area is. area flow <clears throat> or you can say flow flow work net network done half base into height base is 5 minus 2 meter cube height is 600 minus 300 newton per meter square <clears throat> so meter square and meter square will cancel newton meter newton meter is nothing but joule so this will be 1 by 2 into 3 into 300 so 900 by 2 i think it will be getting 450 joules Any questions, anybody? No, sir. <clears throat> okay, so I think I did some four or five problems. Okay, so your job is to do the remaining problems, try it. Okay, if you have doubts, you can always bring it up, or you can send me the doubts in WhatsApp also. Okay, so you try some problems, and if you're not get, able to get it, you can send the question whatsapp also so take the picture and send it to me so monday you'll have the test so study well okay so thank you all bye if you have doubts stay back thanks thank you sir bye sir. thank you sir thank you thank you sir Anybody having any doubts?